Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. So finally, after several months, several, several, several months, the long-awaited drop pod is here. Finally. Now, let me tell you, I delayed this, this idea for a long time because other ideas just became top priority for me and this was just always last. But finally we have it. Uh, this idea, the dropout idea, derived from the Halo 3 ODST game, as well as Halo 2. I'm, I'm a bit of a Halo fan, so that's how I know about this kind of stuff. I played both games, and enjoyed both games. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I had several problems with this drop pod, and that's kind of like another reason for why it was so delayed. You see, a drop pod is made so that it crashes into the ground... And yet, the passenger, the Kerbal, survives, even with a crash. Now, the drop pod itself, the outer, co- the outer covering... <clears throat> oh, man. Oof. Uh, yeah, the outer covering can handle, has an impact tolerance of 80 meters per second, meaning it can crash at below 80 meters per second in speed without it disintegrating into pieces. Above 80 meters per second, it will just tear apart. Now, here's an issue. This drop pod, each drop pod has a seat. On that seat, there is a Kerbal. Now, seats have an impact tolerance of 10 meters per second. Meaning, when you crash and the drop pod, the outer shielding is fine at at below 80 meters per second. And say you are, let's just say you're going like 50 meters per second. There is a chance that the seat, the Kerbal seat will smash. And I've had this several times and I'm not too sure how this happens. <clears throat> oh man, oof! This ate uh, lunch. That's why I'm like, coughing a little bit. Yeah, um, it turns out it's really weird. The Kerbal actually gets out of the seat by itself after a crash. Sometimes, right? I don't fully understand how that works or why that happens. And in fact, what you're looking at now is not the finalized version of the drop pod. It is not. You see. I didn't really want to use parachutes. That's, in a way, I felt like that is cheating. And you can use parachutes, but I decided not to. And I'll read you a little paragraph from the Halo Wiki, where I'm looking at the Halo ODST. Uh, So it's quite an interesting vehicle. It's also known as the Single Occupant Exo Atmosphere Insertion Vehicle. Very nice long name, eh? So I will include like a, a couple pictures every now and then of the drop pod design. And where I got it from. It's a pretty cool looking design. And I didn't, I couldn't really do exactly what it looks like in the actual game. But I tried my best. And it did take uh, several hours to figure it out. So this is just me testing out to see what would happen. And I deployed the parachute too late there. And that's why the Kerbal just spazzed out from all the... That G-force was too much. And, and that Kerbal was on the seat. So it just got off the seat somehow. So I'm guessing the seat smashed or something. So anyway, so after the drop pod has penetrated the atmosphere, at an altitude of 3,000 feet, the upper exterior panels separate, acting as a drag type chute. So let me uh, really reiterate that. Essentially, after 3,000 feet, the outer cover of the drop pod, right? Could this drop pod in the actual design has, not in KSP, but in Halo ODST, it has like several layers. It has like two layers. It has the outer shell and then the inner shell. And what happens is the outer shell, it separates, but it's still connected to the drop pod itself and therefore slows down the entire drop pod. After that, and I've got to find it on the uh, on the site, at about 50 meters, the pod's computer-controlled braking rockets engage, slowing the pod further. Okay, so that's essentially breaking rockets are just uh, retro retro rockets or something like that. So and that that further slows down the drop pod. And this is what I was trying out here. And I think this is the one that turned out pretty well. I, I did. You really do have to time it well and need to know when to activate these separatrons. And this one, yeah, this one did pretty good. Uh, it did good, but again, look what happened. I don't fully understand why this happens. You see the. The seat, I'm not too sure if the seat was still intact there, but for some reason, I was, I was showing you if I had cheats or not. I did not have cheats there. 
See, the, the curb will just, for some reason, get off the seat, whether the seat is broken or not, and it glitches out of the drop pod. Really weird. Really, really weird. Uh, I don't fully understand how that works. It's just me just time or being, being silly. I, w- I was not fast-forwarding the vehicle. Well, the, the video... Oh, my gosh. I was not fast-forwarding the video. <laughs> I was time warping in the game. That's what happened there. And this is, just, again, testing out the Separatrons, but I did not time it that well. Although, I did manage to slow down uh, pretty, pretty good. So, and let's see what's inside. It's really weird. The... Uh, the, the Kerbal, in this case, did get out of the seat. In fact, there is no seat. The, Ker- the Kerbal's seat just smashed, disintegrated. And the Kerbal is is there. He's stuck there. And I, I just can't get him out. I cannot get him out. I cannot glitch him out like the way it happened before by itself. So, there we go. He's permanently stuck. See, the only way to get a Kerbal out of the drop pod is if the seat is still there. You see, and you'll see in it. Uh, I will show you in a pretty soon actually in probably like a minute to uh, soon enough what happens is you get a Kerbal onto the seat but the way you do that is the Kerbal actually teleports through the drop pod after right clicking into the seat but when the Kerbal is on the seat you right click the seat and click leave seat <laughs> seat, seat, seat and then the Kerbal just actually like glitches out of the drop pod itself it's really interesting how it works and again, this is just more testing. Uh, try not to land your drop pod where the mountains are. Like somewhere where it there is a very low elevation is preferable. And I cut the parachute here. This was just one of my early tests. And I added a whole bunch of wings to hopefully slow down this, this ship itself, the drop pod. But it did not seem to work. But the finalized version does utilize the the wings, and it, this is this here is actually the the finalized version, and this is how you get the Kerbal on, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So the Kerbal's underneath. Right click, board. He's inside. He's inside the drop pod now. He essentially teleported through, and he's there. So now you just right click the seat, and you click uh, leave seat. He gets out and he teleports out. Look at that. Pretty cool, eh? That worked out uh, fairly well, and I was always wondering how to get the Kerbal out after you get him in. So, and it worked out. So, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, not always. It's not always the things like that work out, do they? No. And this, what you're looking at, is the actual finalized version. We do have the small control surfaces, uh, and that's what helps us. Pretty much, those are the smallest type of wings you can get in the game. I couldn't get anything else that's smaller. If I could have, I would have used something else instead of these control services because this is not really what they're made it for. And it's just really weird. You see, when you use this drop pod, ensure, make sure that it is not falling directly downwards. Make sure the base is not you know, directly downwards because you need this thing to at least be on an angle so you can then utilize the control surfaces. Because right now, you can actually see that we are no longer falling directly downwards. We are flying horizontally at whatever what is that 90 something meters per second look at this we're still going this is a long it takes a very long time to land this thing that's the only problem it reduces the speed the kerbals usually survive i don't know the percentage ratio of you know if they survive or not but most of them do survive so that's good enough to have on the record and in fact in the halo odst uh the drop pods there it's been said that not all uh, here it is. Breaking rockets on the drop pod do fail on rare occasions, leaving the drop the pod's occupant to die on impact. You see, so it's been known that uh, it does fail, and so it's you know it's realistic if it fails in this game as well. So there we go. A couple wings broke off, but if you have a look, the Kerbal survived. Look at that. You right click, and the Kerbal was out. So links in the description for you guys to download this. It took me a while, and I really did enjoy the design. So again, I really do hope you enjoyed and uh, see you next time. Take care.